off hack wheeze sniffle. this week so if my voice sounds a bit different to normal you'll know why it's also why I'm going to spend this week in the greenhouse and don't worry it's lovely and toasty in here and I've got three sweaters on right this week's job involves this staging I think that it's in the wrong side of the greenhouse and I want to move it to the other side of the greenhouse well, the sun's up there and it's all to do with physics and the complex science of straight lines. But I actually think that this staging is going to be better over here. So let's get started. Now before I do anything else, I've just noticed that this pane of glass has slipped down somewhat. So I'm just going to have to pop outside, push this up and redo some screws. Yeah, you can see that this thing here has practically come off. Push up the glass. The better. While I'm clearing this lot off the staging, I'll just tell you about my week. Because I took a trip up to the northeast with my husband to visit my mother-in-law. It was her 90th birthday. Not that she knew too much about it. She suffers from dementia, she's bedridden, she's in a care home. Um, and if you can get a slight grunt out of her and a twinkle in her eye, then you're doing well. But it kind of got me thinking about how we perceive life. You see, when you're young, people come into basically two types of category. There's the people that you know around you who are pretty much the same age as you. And then there are old people. And the older you get, the more the people underneath you get divided into subcategories like kids who are in infant school, kids who are in junior school, kids who are in high school, kids who are at university. But always there's this group of people above you who are old. And then one day you wake up and you suddenly realize that you're mortal. And one day, you are going to be an old person, God willing. And it kind of changes your perspective on life and, and gets you thinking about what you want to do today. And I'll share with you two examples. Just give me a screwdriver. When I was in my early 30s, I used to run a small research facility. And... Uh, we had a lab as part of that. And there was a guy who worked for me. He was, uh, he was a larger than life character, a big guy. He used to drink a lot. He loved his fishing. He loved his family. Um, and he used to work in the lab. And I remember one Friday evening saying to him, you know, what are you doing this weekend, Paul? And he said, oh, I'm off fishing again. I said, what a surprise. I said, anyway, have a great weekend. Saturday night I had a phone call from my boss saying that this guy was in hospital. He'd had um, an aneurysm in his brain. His brain was bleeding. He was in intensive care and it was a bit touch and go. 36 hours later I got a phone call I didn't want to say he'd passed away. 42 years old. 42 years old. Life snuffed out like that. Another example I'll give you concerns my own father. When he reached the age of about 50, about as old as I am now, he started making plans for his retirement, bearing in mind he was going to retire at the age of about 63. But he always used to talk about the things that he was going to do, the places he'd love to go. He was always talking about going to the Rocky Mountains because he'd love to see that. And at 56, he was diagnosed with a brain tumour. He never saw his 58th birthday. And those two events really have caused me to change the way I think about life. And if there's two things I would say to you, it's this. Cherish the people around you because they may not be there tomorrow. 
And secondly, if there's something you want to do, you really want to do in your life, do it now. Don't talk about it. Don't put it off till next year or the year after. Do it because you may never get a chance. So I've always tried to live my life as fully as I can, live each day as fully as I can. That doesn't mean fast cars, drugs, rock and roll. Oh, actually it does mean rock and roll. But it kind of means, what am I going to do today? What am I going to do today that's going to take me a step closer to where I want to be? Maybe if we all lived like that, a lot more would get done in this world and there wouldn't be so much fighting. Alrighty, I should just be able to lift this out. I should... Oh, more screws. Now I should be able to just lift it out. Hooray! And I'll take off these here brackets. And now I can pop these on the other side. I'll just use my big spirit level to get it in the right place. Now for the seer supports. Oh, I think my battery's running down. Just like me. <coughs> That's it. Nice and level and sturdy. I know I was a bit sort of wishy-washy with my reasons for moving the staging over to this side, but one of the issues I always have is with shading in the greenhouse. And if I've got the staging on this side, I can put the shading up here and it'll shade the plants on that side. But also, if I put a little bit of shading down here, I can choose to have the things on the staging in shade or not. And I couldn't do that last year. It was all or nothing. So I'm hoping I can control the light levels in here a little better. We shall see. Anyway, time for the big piece. Ooh, this just lifts up off its brackets. Ooh, it's got no legs on this side though. <laughs> then remove these brackets, if my screwdriver will allow me. Oh, I don't mind taking things out. It's putting things in that it objects to at the moment. Did I just say that? You know, I think before I do anything else, I'm going to have to recharge this screwdriver. So there is one job that I really do need to do. It's time to brave the soggy soil and dig my leaks up. I was going to dig them up for Christmas, but it just kind of never happened. They've certainly got good white bits on them. I'll show you them in a minute. Now these leeks aren't bad, but I don't think they're quite as good as what I grew last year. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that this bed here gets slightly less sun than that bed there because the shed's in the way and it blocks off a bit of sunlight at the end of the day. But secondly, if you remember, I had my huge beans, my run of beans here, which of course will restrict the amount of sunlight getting on the leaks. So although they might not be as fat as some of those that I got last year, they'll still make excellent soup. I'll just trim these off show you what I've got. I'll just give them a wash in this here bucket of water. Oh there we are, that's not too bad, they look not too shabby really. Okay so they're not enormously fat like the ones you might buy in the shops, but I don't actually care because I'm going to make a cock -a leaky soup. See my website for details. I'm going to make some leek and potato soup to help me with my cold. See my website for details. And I'm going to use these to make a pasta-free lasagna. Mm-hmm. Keep tuned. So, my screwdriver's charged. They've got the staging on the other side. The thing I need to do now is make sure it's level. Well, that's not too bad, Ted. By the power of Grayskull! 
Wunderbar. Right, that's the last one in. Now all I have to do is put everything back. Well, that's my job for the day done. It's getting a bit cool now and I can feel my cold starting to sniffle. It's time to go inside and make some soup. Thanks for watching. Next week, if the weather stays dry, I'll be giving some attention to my fruit trees and my soft fruit plants as well. They're all in need of a bit of a prune. So do join me next time in Titley's Busy Garden. Thank you.